Our artist of the month for February is artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. And I'm going to read this story to you, a book written about his childhood and his dreams of becoming a famous artist. So this story is called Radiant Child, the story of young artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. And pay extra attention to the beautiful illustrations in this book. It looks as though they were painted on pieces of wood. So beautiful. Somewhere in Brooklyn, between hearts that thump, double dutch and hopscotch, and salty mouths that slurp sweet ice, a little boy dreams of being a famous artist. In his house, you can tell a serious artist dwells. As he sits at a table with pencils scattered everywhere, Jean-Michel draws from morning until night with a serious face amid a storm of papers. He refuses to sleep until he has created a masterpiece. At night, images enchant Jean-Michel's mind and he wakes from his dreams to add one more line. His drawings are not neat or clean, nor does he color inside the lines. They are sloppy, ugly, and sometimes weird, but somehow still beautiful. His art comes from his mother, Mathilde, a Puerto Rican woman who designs and sews, cooks and cleans, and makes the house look like a stylish magazine. But most important, she lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel on his father's old work papers. From her, he learns that art is not only in the poetry books she reads to him or in the theaters and museums they visit. Art is in the street games of little children, in our style and the way that we speak, it is how messy patchwork of the city creates new meaning from ordinary things. While visiting a museum, they look at his favorite works of art. Reading the story behind each artist, reading the story behind each work, this is how Jean-Michel learns what it means to be a famous artist. Back at home, he creates art on the floor as his father Gerard plays jazz records, Mama Mathilde cooks arroz con pollo, and calls Jean-Michel mi amour. The energy and life of the city can be felt in each line of his drawing. As time goes by, Jean-Michel learns that art has a healing power. After a car accident, he is scared and confused. Mathilde gives him a book to calm his fears. It's filled with pictures of bones and skulls and other body parts. Jean-Michel draws from it until he knows it all by heart, and he is no longer afraid. Back at home, Jean-Michel's body heals, but his heart breaks. His mother's mind is not well, and the family breaks. She is no longer, she no longer lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel, but sits by the window singing only to the birds. Jean-Michel is confused and filled with terrible blues when Mathilde can no longer live at home. He tries drawing the terrible out of his blues, but things are not the same. As Jean-Michel grows older, he visits his mother when he can, always bringing artwork to show, telling her that one day it will be in a museum when I am a famous artist. A teenager now, Jean-Michel decides, Papa, I will be very, very famous. With a sly look and a twinkle in his eye, Jean-Michel leaves Brooklyn for New York City, the Lower East Side, a concrete jungle where only the tough survive. During the day, dressed in a green jumpsuit splattered with paint, Jean-Michel stays with friends, sleeping on couches and floors, leaving a barrage of collages and poem-filled papers everywhere he goes. At night, Jean-Michel spray paints the walls downtown with poems and drawings that catch the eye of artists, gallery goers, and passers-by. Under his art, he signs the name Samu instead of Jean-Michel. Everyone wants to know, who is Samu? Samu moves from street corners to gallery walls with powerful color compositions and line, collaging and painting on anything he can find. His art is still not neat or clean and definitely not inside the lines, but somehow still beautiful. With his magical charm, Jean-Michel draws a crowd, 
but when it's time to work, he prefers to be alone with the TV and radio on full blast. Now, in expensive suits splattered with paint, he flips through stacks of magazines and open books and paints into the night and sometimes for days at a time while sounds and images jump in his head. Jean-Michel, an artist among artists, and never doubts one line, creating from a soundtrack that is all his own. People describe him as radiant, wild, a genius child, but in his heart, he is king. So he draws crowns for himself and others he admires. A grown man now, with the art world in his hands, Jean-Michel still visits his mother when he can. And at his most important shows, above all the critics, fans, and artists he admires, the place of honor is his mother's, a queen on a throne. He is now a famous artist.